So um, thanks for joining me, everybody. Um, hi, Donna. Hi, um, Cheryl. Hi, Alex. Hi, Diane. Hi, um, Ross. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Chandra. Am I in your car again? I wonder. Um, and um, hi, um, anybody else who is there who I, um, the screen keeps moving now. So um, lots of echoes now. OK, I'm just going to have to um, see if I need to turn myself down a bit. Um, I don't. Um, no, I think I'm okay with all of this, but um, if I if it continues, I'm just gonna see if that makes a difference. Anyway, I'll speak a bit more quietly. I've got a bit excited then. So um, here we are today to make um, a little bunny rabbit. It's still time to do these for Easter. Um, if you <clears throat> want to um, just use the tutorial to uh, make these, then that's absolutely fine. All you need is um, two this type of fluff and two smaller types of fluff and then if you've got glue in eyes you can use our six millimeter black glue in eyes or you can needle felt the eyes with black if you however want to make it from the kit you've got to be fast because we've only got three left in the stock and they are um they are a seasonal um kit so we won't be making any more because easter is nearly there and um we we've got lots of other things that we need to do if you are um if you like bunnies but you prefer hairs We've also got a hair kit and of that one, that's an all year round kit and um, you can make um, two from our kit. So we have the, got these on our website at www.themakers.co.uk. I should also just say that we do take phone call orders as well. Uh, lots of you have rang in and our phone number is 01453839454. I'll say that again in case you haven't got a pen handy and need to write it down. It's 01453 eight three nine four five four right let's get started how is everybody today um nice to see you too sarah how is your competition going um that actually leads me to the topic if you don't know yet sarah brown from needle felting uk which is a, a lovely facebook group with um, what how many members have you got something like i don't know over twelve thousand. i'm sure um she's running a competition um called heart warming so you can share a needle felted um photo no not the photo doesn't need to be needle felted. You can share a photo of something needle felted that is heartwarming. Get your words right, Stephanie. And um, you can win <clears throat> a bag of wool. That's 80 grams of um, a rainbow. Isn't that beautifully packed? I just have to mention Alice. She just packs our um, kits and, and uh, packs so beautifully. I absolutely love it. Um, so you win one of these and then you can win yourself um, a medium sized earth mat. I will be using these um, they're one of our best selling products now think of the environment 100% wool top compostable the, it should never actually um, you should never be able to destroy it they go on and on and on and on forever like I do and um, and then you also get a full set of needles you get two medium two fine and two coarse and they're all um, color marked you see that and um, so you know which one is which because we tell you on the outside on the label which needle is what and in all of our kits we always tell you if you need to use a fine medium or coarse and and of course in our kits you get needles anyway so um let's go back to little bunnies they're really easy to make um like everything that um, i've done um, most of the live stream streams i've done have been about basic shaping and these are no different so i'm going to show you how to um, make basic shapes and what I'm adding into this time um, that's new is how to make a flat shape um, like these little ears. And um, if you like the idea of um, making very um, simple shapes, then our little lamb kit, I'm thinking of seasonal things. This is a really easy um, um, project to make as well. Very similar done like the bunny. In fact, at some point the bunny looks like a lamb. Um, I already talked about the hairs and then of course we've got chickens and um, they're even easier to make. So let's start with the basic shaping. You two have to sit over there. There you can cuddle up to each other. Put a bit of there. Can have a little bit of um, grass as well. And um, 15 grams of um, brown wool uh, wool bats in particular looks a little bit like this. This is our Russian caracal. We absolutely love it. How is that sound going now? Um, oh, something has gone now. It's okay. Okay, so the echoes have gone. Oh, great. So hmm, I did that all by myself. I just pushed a button that way. <laughs> Rather proud of me. 
Um, oh, thank you. The hair kit is lovely. Thanks, Diana. Um, no, Diane even. Have we got a Diana and a Diane? Um, no. Um, Diddly Devo M. Hiya. I've not seen you before. Um, if you if you remember yesterday, we we went to um, 1,000 um, subscribers on on YouTube. So I'm um, really, really pleased that uh, we've made it to that um, um, magic number. Um, and so uh, yeah, anybody else who you think might be interested in our channel and get a regular uh, free uh, needle felting tutorials, just tell them to subscribe and um, make us happy as well. Right, oh, you, oh yeah, I so saw actually, Deb, that your Earth Mud arrived today. Hooray, excellent. There you go. So um, making a basic shape, first of all, when you've got your 15 grams, you're gonna tear half of that off and put one half to one side. So um, this half here, I'm going to roll as I did with all the other basic shapes into a neat little um, egg shape, <clears throat> well, an oblong sausage, but quite fat. And um, what I do is, and what I did yesterday, is I tease these fibers out so I can roll them around the shape for as long as I possibly can, because then it makes a nice neat shape here. And I'm just going to go a little bit um, smaller so you can um, hopefully see it a little bit better. I've also snuck in today um, our two books, um, Making needle, uh, Simple Needle Felts and also Making Needle Felted Animals. Incidentally, the hair is in this one, so you can follow the instructions in there. And um, the, um, the lambs are in there um, because they're part of the, uh, I'm pretty certain they're in the back, yeah, part of the nativity um, for, there you go, for um, Christmas and um, and the hair is in here also really easy explained it's a really lovely book it's one of um, the best-selling books from um, of our publishers and um, just trying to find the hair oh I think he's right at the back because he's with a with a what we call the mystical animals like the unicorn and the tortoise and the hare. of course he has to be with the tortoise there you go there's the hair. So you can make him um, from our book as well. If you've got that already, you do definitely don't need to buy the kit. You've got the instructions already and you just need a bit of brown wool and a bit of white. And I think for the hair, you need a bit of gray as well. Right, so let's roll this up again. It's popped open while I've been um, leafing through the books. So I'm making this um, shape. And when I've got these wispy fibers left, these are the ones that I'm now stabbing in with my coarse needle. The Russian caracal is a really coarse wool, which, um, um, we love because it felts down really nice and tight. Um, um, what makes a, um, a fiber coarse is that it has got obviously the individual coarse fibers, but sometimes it's really nice when they've got coarse and fine fibers mixed and that makes especially um, um, strong felt. Is it me or can you see this a bit blurred? I'm just gonna try a different um, camera setting. Let's try that one, is that a bit better? Um, I, I'm definitely gonna try and get a bit closer with the camera in the future but that's another setup on another live stream. Um, so I'm just shaping this very, very briefly. I don't want to give it too much stabbing. Um, there's lots and lots we can do as we're attaching the different uh, body parts, but I'm just giving a, a stab all around um, and mine looks at the moment like that, a bit like, well, I don't know what to call it, a potato. How about that, a potato, there you go. And um, so the next thing I'm going to do is, is I'm making the head and I'm using roughly half of that half that I've um, taken off um, earlier. And now I'm going to make um, a ball shape. From that bit, I'm also taking a little bit off and now I'm making another oblong shape as I did a minute ago, but in miniature or slightly smaller there. And then I'm stabbing that closed as well. So this is the head that I have made. <coughs> So now I've got two shapes, two um, fairly round shapes, slightly more oblong than um, uh, round. And that shape now, there by the way, if you um, have made little rabbits in a different way, there are lots of ways of making uh, different um, uh, creatures and none of them are right or wrong, they just are. It's just personal preference. So. Now, if I put, um, I want to put this head onto this onto, onto the body, sort of slightly up towards the top. And I'm just felting this on very um, briefly, just so that I stab my needle into the edge of the smaller round shape and into the bigger shape. And you can see that it squishes down because um, it's still very soft, this, um, 
So I've got a shape now for a, um, a, a quite a weird looking creature here at the moment with um, the body shape and then a similar shape but much smaller attached slightly to the top of that lot bigger shape. Let's see what... Um, yeah, the sheep are lovely to make. You should make them, Donna. You've probably got lots of sheep around where you live up in Scotland. So that would be... Um, there's, oh, there are over 50 entries into Sarah's um, needle felting um, competition. And um, that means that you've got, oh my goodness, over 15,000 members. How did that happen? I remember when you were like maybe a thousand members. Um, that's amazing. Definitely pop over if you're not part of the Needle Felting UK group yet. Talking about um, Facebook pages, we've also got a Facebook page called Everyone a Maker. And of course, you can also give us a like on our makers page. We're actually so close to 6,000 6, likes that we can't wait um, to, um, to reach that uh, big milestone. In fact, we have a little competition planned for that as well. But um, we're, just, we're just keeping that up our sleeve at the moment. There you go. So next thing you're going to do is you're going to use a bit of that brown wool that you've put to one side and you make that into a nice flat sheet. So it, it doesn't have to be, um, it can be a bit see-through, but it needs to be big enough to be pulled over the head and over the body so that you can cover the whole of the head and, um, and stroke it back towards the, the back of that little bunny. And now you're going to snap that down so that it it basically just covers that joint entirely and you're um, sort of pulling it back over the body and it's it kind of fuses and melts into the body straight away and um, you felt that on all around can you see there felt it on all around the whole of the um, bunny and I haven't actually felt it into the head yet but I will do that in a minute I'm just trying to establish that sheet that I've put over the head and um, partially covering the body. And now you can work on the head and flatten that um, part of that bit of the wool that you put over it, shape that into the head at the same time and give, the, give it a bit more shape again all around. There you go. So now you've got, um, now you've got, you can see how we're coming along here. You have got a, um, the body shape, roughly the same size as this one. And then you've got the head here and uh, the head will sh change shape as we're attaching um, ears and working on the, on, on the eyes and so on. So don't, don't worry too much if it's um, looking a little bit out of shape at the moment. That's absolutely fine. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make the ears. Um, this is the bit where, um, where we're making a flat shape instead of a round shape. Just put that little bunny there maybe. And uh, you've got um, your um, leftover wool from earlier and you just take um, a good sort of pinch off there. The only thing you need to make out of this are the legs. So what you could be doing is you could actually put, um, and you need a bit for the tail, so you could be putting six equal shapes um, out now. Two, three, four, that could be the tail, and I have actually got a little bit more here. Um, five, six. So you've got um, six equal shapes here. These, these can all be legs, so I'm going to put these there, and then these two can be ears, and that's the tail. So now I'm going to make the ears, and uh, with this I am using my felting needle, and I actually stab onto the mat the shape of the ear, straight into, um, straight into, the, um, into the wool. And then I'm folding the wispy ends in that are on the outside of that um, shape that I have um, felted. Let's just have a look what else have we got. Um, keeps keeps you very busy. That's yeah, I can imagine. Um, are you are you still at school now, um, Sarah, or are you at home with the children? I should also just mention if you're watching this later, um, you will not be able to see those comments. So um, you might wonder what on earth I'm talking about, but when whilst this is live, I can interact with you guys because you sent me messages and um, I can read them and I can respond to them. But when you're watching this later, none of that will happen. So it might be a bit boring listen, listening to my monologue and not knowing what this is all about. 
there you go so i've made an ear now because i've been um, stabbing the insides um, of the wool in i've stabbed it all over and i'm going to make a second one straight away so you can watch me do that one as well first i make the outline stab that down like that and then i'm folding the <coughs> wispies ends in and if you've noticed I, I there's one end where i'm not folding them in because that's the part that i want to attach to the body there we go that's it and take it off the mat felt it on the other side and stab it in i also should mention that we've um released we i don't know if we have already but we will be releasing a new variant of our um sweetie jar uh, pick and mix collection and um the one that's ready i've just got it here i talked yesterday about um two that are currently um we're selling and this one is um awakening of the earth and for me it's like um this is this is all the earth what's happening in under the ground we live in a, in a part of the um in the part of the uk where you get this amazing red sandstone so i um, need to put that in and then as as you go up over the ground it's getting nice and green and um, of course the colors of spring are there i'll just pass it a bit closer there colors of spring with the green and the yellow and the orange and um the, the pinks and there's somewhere purple in there as well but it's hiding and then um you're going up into the sky and lots of um white clouds I've, i can see so many white clouds out of the window at the moment white and um and a bit of gray needs to be in there because um we do get the odd a rain cloud at this time of the year especially in april with april showers so this one is um a new release we all only ever do 10 of um, each of these colors so if you like this one there's 200 grams in there it's absolutely stuffed to the brim so um we can't really can't fit any more in there it's really lovely and full and um, please reuse those jars they're great for wool storage because you can tighten the lid so it's completely airtight and uh, you don't get those horrible little moths in there that eat your wool. Um, yeah, so this one is um, coming up. And then of course, we've still got our cloud nine and we've got our animal mix. The animal mix, oh, I'm just gonna reach that one there. It's got lovely, lovely uh, curly bits in there as well. Can you see there? Lots of curly fibers. Um, you can make all kinds of animals out of this. Fox, dormouse. Um, well you can make um, a bunny out of it too um, sheep definitely if you want the curly bits and um, badger down there because you've got the, the white there as well you can make a badger out of it there's so many things you can do and especially if you've got our making needle felted animals book um, you, you will be um, spoiled for choice there right put that down right got two ears now is anybody felting along hi Emma, I nearly forgot to tune in. It must be going well as I didn't get any messages today. Ha ha. Yeah, well, you missed the beginning, Emma, when I was silent. Um, I know it's hard to imagine me being silent, but um, I was definitely, uh, nobody could hear me and it was due to a little button that I didn't even know existed. Um, so you are on a rotor for school, Sarah. Yeah, that must be tough. Um, and who else have we got? Just uploaded the jar variant. It's available now. There you go. We've got um, instant response to um, to what I'm saying here. So uh, now I'm going to add a little bit of pink. So it looks like a little bit of pink flesh is uh, shining through the fur of that of that bunny rabbit. I stab that down. Here we go. And I do that from the other side as well. Again, if you've got any multi tools and you're making flat pieces in particular, um, then do use them. The three needle felting tool is great for this. Um, just speeds things up. Just have to watch your fingers. It definitely hurts more if you stab yourself with that one. And I'm stabbing sort of in the center more to already shape the ear inward a little bit. Um, so I'm trying to now stab just from the side where the pink is visible. If you've got to neaten up the edges, then you can still do that by uh, using your single needle, stab a little bit into the side. You can um, refine these ears if you wish. 
but if you are happy just to learn how to make a basic shape and a very basic bunny basic bunny rabbit then um, there's one ear and that's ready to be attached now so I'm just going to um, repeat that with the other ear add a bit of pink in there start out one end then stab, stab it all around it's very satisfying needle felting if you've never needle felted before and you're watching for the first time it is a very very simple and easy process you literally just stab the needle in and out in a straight line that's um, basically the secret um, and the only skill you need to learn is to stab a needle in and out in a straight line it doesn't really matter if you go if you go in at a right angle or at a shallow angle um, as long as you go out the same way that you go in and um, then you will be absolutely fine if you if you don't do that then you um, it's not the end of the world you just break your needle and you learn your lesson not to do that again um, there we go let's get that shape more make that a bit more round bring the edges up there we go now I've got two ears and I'm going to attach these to my bunny rabbit now so I've got these wispy ends here these I'm going to spread them out so that they they sort of um, stick out on two ends there and now I'm going to sit them on the side of the head of the bunny rabbit like that the ears and this these are the fibers so they literally fit onto there and all I'm going to do is I'm going to um, fasten these wispy ends into the head of the bunny rabbit so that I can let go of the ear. So the ear is not fastened yet. It's still flopping around, but at least it's um, the ear is fastened enough so that I can uh, work on attaching it properly now. So now I'm going to stab all around the ear, but I concentrate my stubs into the um, ear where you imagine the ear hole to be so that I can make that ear... A little bit where it looks a bit more like it's it's got an ear hole in there I don't know if you can see that very well um, and um, and I go all around if you have a join um, don't worry about it just add a little bit of your brown wool and cover it up um, it's it's really quite easily done and then you repeat that on the other side with the ear so the ears my ears um, on my bunny rabbit are facing out at the moment but you can have them facing forward or you could even have floppy ears um, rabbits are quite sweet with floppy ears. Just look at the front of the rabbit as well to make sure that the ears are in the um, are in the right place. So I'm just stabbing all around the base of the ear to get them fastened on properly. And what always um, makes it um, come to life is when you actually start thinking about the eyes of the animal. And um, to do this, I am literally just going to stab a couple of little um, eye sockets here on either side just below the ears and rabbits have got eyes on the side of the head because they need to be able to look almost behind them all around so they don't get eaten if they had them at the front they couldn't look they didn't, wouldn't have such a, um, a, a, a wide range of, of vision so I'm just stabbing the eyes into there um, as soon as I do that you can tell that I'm starting to shape the face and that that's always really nice when you start adding eyes into um, or at least the eye sockets into an animal you start to see the features of the face sort of come out so I'm making these quite big because bunny rabbits have got big eyes and all I'm doing now is I'm going to add a tiny bit of white into the center of the eye there so I'm, I'm filling in the eye socket with white and then I do that on the other side as well so if you have got um, if you've got glue in eyes I show you now how to use those but if you've got black um, then I'll show you how to use um, that too if you don't want to use glue in eyes and you just want to stick with wool or you don't have the glue in eyes looks a bit horrible at the moment just with white eyes but um, fear not we'll um, we'll get to that in a minute I've just got to grab some black eyes here we go so if you have little, I've got three here, but only need two, see that they're the same. Let's have a look at that one. How is everybody doing? Welcome everybody, first timers and regulars both. Is that you Sophie or is that Emma with uh, two, two um, accounts open? Oh hi Alex, you're stabbing along today, how's it going? Um, great. 
Um, hi, Steph. It, this is the first time on here live. I'm enjoying it. Oh, thank you, Christina. Um, that's nice to hear. I hope you'll come back after after this. I've actually had a lovely lady ring yesterday after the um, the uh, live tutorial, and uh, I apologised profusely and saying I'm so sorry that um, I, there are so many technical glitches. And she said, I just have to do um, this by looking at you. And she actually said, it's really lovely you making mistakes because it makes you one of us. <laughs> I loved it. It relaxed me so much thinking. Oh, I'm, I can relax. I'm not superhuman. I'm just like everybody else. We all um, have our little struggles and have make our little mistakes. And one thing I will just tell you is because yesterday I said, what I make, make um, 12 things that you do every day. Um, not like massive big pressures on your, on your life, but, but just um, little things like um, to have a bit of a routine and, and just to treat yourself and keep, keep yourself in that happy place. And um, one of the important things for me is a cup of tea, which I um, have had plenty of them today already, and this is half finished. Um, make the bed. My bed is made, but it wasn't even me, it was my husband this morning. Um, walk um, or work out. I've been for a walk this morning with my dogs. Hug my children. Um, I think I've hugged one of my children today, so I, I don't think I will get all, all four of them, because my um, teenagers are very temperamental when it comes to hugs. Um, there has to be an extremely special occasion <laughs> and even then I probably don't get one but one day cuddle the dogs haven't done that yet say something nice to somebody I have actually done that today laugh I've plenty of laughs um, take in the natural world I did I did a little video of some, the cutest lambs that are in the field next to where we live um, and it's really funny because the chickens are in that field with the lambs and they're sort of like weirdly um, wary of each other and it's quite funny to watch them and um, the sound of a lamb is just too cute. Um, I've got that on my Facebook, um, on my personal Facebook page. So if you want to have a look, um, feel free. Take one lovely photo, definitely done that. Um, make something nice. This one. Um, message one person and check in. I have done that as well. And make somebody laugh. Well, I'll leave that to you to judge. If I've made you laugh today, I can tick that one off my list as well. So if you've got a similar list, um, tell tell us what you what you have um, what you're doing um, to keep yourself somehow sane in this crazy world. So if you have got the glue and ice, let's go back to that. I'm just going to reduce them. Um, this is all going to be so slick one day. And uh, recently, somebody said to me, "You should have at least two or three per people working with you." Well, I promise you, I'm the only one in this room, which is probably why things um, are going. Uh, a little bit all over the place. So if you have got um, the glue in ice, I'm making a hole in that white patch with my felting needle. So I'm just literally, oh, this is the funny one where uh, it's not very, it's not very, um, what's the word? Um, I think that's a better one that has zoomed in better. So I'm making a hole. If you make a hole, you have to watch the needle coming out at the other end. Could be quite um, painful if you um, don't remember. And then I just insert the eye there like that. Eyes in. As soon as the eye is in, you've got a little face looking at you. Hello. And then you can repeat that on the other side. If you don't have um, any... Um, sorry, I'm trying to find some black now, which of course I should have had ready to start with, but so much better to improvise. There we go. Bit of black. If you haven't got um, the glue in eyes, just use a little bit of black. Scrunch it up in your fingers so you've got a, um, a little um, black patch there. And then stab that into the eye, preferably so that you've got a bit of white still showing. But if the white disappears altogether, you can always um, add a little bit of right, uh, white around the circle and again, and then just stab this in. Of course, you can also use a dark brown. It doesn't have to be black. And then you've made an eye, which is just as good. Um, if you can, if you want to, you could add a tiny little white reflection point onto it. This is the great thing about these glue and eyes, you don't have to worry about that. And um, you need the tiniest of white and just let it disappear into the eye so that um, now you've got a tiny, tiny bit of white there. I don't even know if you can still see it. I think you might be able to. So if you, um, it's either that with um, the glue and eye or that with the needle felted eye. Um, to be honest, it's really hard to tell the difference, um, but I would do definitely I would do both eyes the same 
So now I've got my little bunny rabbit. I haven't got any legs yet. So if you um, felt that this was enough and you don't want to do any more and this has completely overloaded your brain, that's fine. You can just put that little bunny rabbit into a bit of um, grass or um, on a bit of um, green wool and you've got a bunny rabbit. You can add a little tail and I'll show you how to do that. But this is a bunny rabbit basically absolutely fine. But if you wanted to add legs, then you can, um, you can do that too. And I'll show you how to do that. Now, there are many ways of making legs. Um, certainly in needle felting terms and um, one of them is that you can um, uh, make a shape like we did before so I've got my leg wool here I'm going to fold that in half and then you just roll it in sideways into um, a tight little sausage really as tight as you can there I'm rolling this up so I have got fluffy bits here and then I've got this um, tightly rolled and now I've got to just step into the tightly rolled bit to fasten the shape in but I'm not actually going to um, um, felt the, the fluffy bits at the back <clears throat> what you will probably find is that you've got quite a lot of fluffy bits so you could take um, a few off um, by just teasing the fibers off don't tear the leg apart but just uh, tease it off and and then as with the ears you flatten it out so that it becomes a solid base or um, a fluffy base I should say it's not solid and that will then fasten onto the side of the rabbit with the leg pointing forward but don't worry too much which way it's pointing it just get it on there so we're making four legs um, and if you uh, tear off a little bit of the fluff of the remaining of the leg put that to one side because that might come in handy if you need to cover up the joint another way of making a leg is where you use your felting needle and you use that as a um, as a, um, a base to wrap the wool around really tightly. So um, I'm wrapping the wool really tight around this now. Um, you have to watch your hand as you're going past the tip of the needle, so you don't um, you don't um, Im impale yourself on on there. And then just tear the rest of the wool off when the leg is um, is uh, fat enough. And then you just all you do is you pull your needle out and then you can give that a few stabs as well shape it a little bit and you've made another leg the disadvantage with this is that you haven't got the fluffy bits to attach them so you definitely need the extra wool um, the extra fluffy bit to attach them so that they don't just look like they've just been um, needle felted onto the body so whichever way you want to do it um, it's entirely up to you I'm just going to use the first technique and I'll show you that again so you've got your a long piece of wool you fold it in half and then you're rolling it in as tightly as you can into a sausage shape and then when you get to the very end of the wispy fibers just keep turning them around and around because it's actually those wispy fibers that make them stick together then just stub the end of the leg and it's probably sort of about five centimeters long which is um, maybe two inches I don't know I'm not so good with inches but um let's have a look what's going on here oh Emma it's you with two accounts so it's not actually so far Sophie um, watching um, um I think my poor old mum had made me at least 30 cups of tea since lockdown oh bless her I, I said to, I said to you early Emma can I come and stay in your hotel she's had food delivered to her to her room door um yeah that Oh my god that would be the first i i, I, I want to come and stay with you yes as long as i don't run out of tea bags i should be okay um sandra yes um on your to-do list is make tea make tea do some crafting make tea okay <laughs> i think you're cheating with that list <laughs> you can't have 12 times make tea um so the um oh yes do you want to talk about the fox somebody's mentioned the fox i'm just gonna um let you make legs while i um while i go a little bit uh, closer up and so i'm gonna have to have a cup of uh, a drink of tea now that you've mentioned it so i'm gonna have a drink of tea just bear with me nothing like cold tea i drink that most of the time anyway there is our fox um, the fox is our April subscription box. Um, we've, it's our third anniversary for subscription boxes. So he is um, an anniversary fox. He's fast asleep, snoozing away. 
with no curl in the with no curl with no care in the world and he's curled up and um and um he you can make him he's completely made from wool you can make him from our um uh, subscription box in it also i sorry i have to just bring him up again in it you also get um I don't know can you see the whiskers you get um horse hair in the box as well um to make these lovely whiskers and um yeah he's he's really beautiful so um this incidentally this wool is a special mix that is our makers mix you can't even buy that yet because we we've um asked our wool supplier to mix wool for us and they did so this is our special design wool butt and um and so he's he's in our April box. Um, we've only just started them. It's available for the whole of the month of April. And then if you subscribe, you can also cancel any time. We don't tie you in a contract. We're not mean like that. We want you to enjoy the boxes and love um, love the idea that they come through your door um, or being delivered by your postie every month um, rather than dreading them. And then next month, is a, a fawn it will be slightly smaller than this one because we want to put something else into the box so that's a bit of a surprise but it's to do with decoration and um, brand new are our fairy subscription boxes which you can also buy as a one-off box and yesterday I was talking about the um, forget-me-not fairy and I've actually remembered to bring one down today so this is a uh, next month's box this is the forget-me-not fairy um, actually that's I think that's wrong it's the other way around um, it's first of all it's the pansy flower fairy this one for May there you go and there will be lots of little decorations with it as well and then um, and then like the one that I showed you is our May uh, fairy which is the forget me not fairy and if you subscribe this month you get our spring fairy um, with, that has got sparkles on it and she's holding a, a bunch of flowers there as well so you get the natural curls in, in each of the boxes um, and uh, they're not they're not going to be all just hanging fairies there will be some other themes in there as well but we're starting out with um, three hanging um, fairies at the moment so um, that's it and you get it it's it's small enough to fit through your letterbox so if you don't want to meet anybody not even the postman you're safe you'll just stick it right through the letterbox and it comes in a in a lovely pink envelope um, but that's the um has that answered any questions you can skip a box whenever you want oh yeah that's the other thing if you subscribe you don't have to have every month's box you manage your own account you can always skip one um do you always wrap tightly for body shapes i no i don't actually i keep it really soft um i i'm quite an impatient felter so i i make a lot of my my felt uh, felted creations quite softly um, sometimes you have to make it tight if you especially if you um, have to attach lots of things over it but I, even then I keep it quite soft because as you are working with it you can still sculpt it and there's a lot of um, flexibility in it I know that some people do it exactly the opposite they do a really tight body potentially um, even just with core wool and then they cover it with wool over it there are so many different ways of doing things and if you um, if you have found a way that you prefer stick with it because not everybody fits the same shoe. So um, I'm hoping those who are felting along have now made four legs. I'm just going to catch up very quickly. Um, oh, <laughs> Emma, okay. I know you're self-isolating. Um, yeah, I know you are. Um, oh, you've not been out for 10 days. I don't know how you do it. I would go absolutely stir crazy. Anybody else who's not been out for that long? Um, you've got another four days and then you can give your parents a hug is that right that's it um, just to say that Emma is actually you're perfectly healthy aren't you you're just not taking any chances at the moment um, so Emma is working from home um, oh thank you happy birthday sub boxes it is a birthday definitely um, where I where am I filming well I'm filming in our workshop we have a um, we've got a lovely light room. I can actually look out of the window and I can see a bit of sky, um, plus all the other industrial units that are on the same um, estate as we are. And um, um, it's a it's it's currently set up as a as a studio. We normally um, have it as a staff room, but um, because of the coronavirus, we have to, had to take certain measures, and um, we are now. Um, we've only got half of member of staffs uh, on site at any one point 
we've closed our kitchen so everybody's bringing in their food ready to eat um whenever and wherever and um the staff room is no longer a staff room because nobody sits down so that's it we're such slave drivers no they do they do sit down but we in a in a much bigger space because they can all sit down in our shop now which is um probably about four times the size of this room and so we can actually keep the distance between each other that we're required at the moment <clears throat> it's all very complicated um especially when you're an employer and you try and keep your staff safe with wiping everything down um several times during the day with um dettol or bleach water and it's all very boring i'm afraid um but um we're still up and running we're on top of our orders um, the only thing we can't do right at right at the moment is go to shows, which is one of the reasons why we've introduced the sweetie jars, because that's the one thing that we can't offer to anybody, um, but we can now, because we bring the sweetie jars to you, you don't have to come to us. So I've now got four legs on the go here. In fact, I've made um, I've made five legs, just for good measure. So I've got to I'm going to use those four that have got the wispy ends on it, and then I make a tail from some of the wispy wool that's left over. So now it's just a question of attaching the legs there. Don't worry too much if it's um, sticking out, like um, I nearly said, like it's got a broken leg, but um, no, I don't want to even have that image in my head. Just get it on there for now. And then once it's on, very similar to the ear, you just stab the um, wispy fibers in into the body and then start shaping it. So I'm turning it around so you can see it. So then get it into the position where you want it to be. So that it's facing forward and then you can um, stab into the leg. I'm looking upside down on this now, so I've no idea where I'm going with this needle. I hope it still looks okay. If you've got a join, then um, then just, just basically add a little bit of wool over the top like you uh, potentially have done with the ears. And um, if you need to make the base of the bunny rabbit flatter, so it actually sits flat on the floor, then do that too. And just um, attach the leg to the side of the body. Make it make the front leg face forward. In fact, they're all facing forward, all, all the legs. There you go. So it's now got a leg that's facing forward. It's a crouching rabbit, so it's not like standing on its four legs. So it doesn't, the legs don't need to give it a lot of stability. If you have got... Um, slightly smaller and slightly larger legs and keep the fatter ones for the back and put the um, slimmer ones at the front and then repeat this on the other side there you go that's it and um oh yes you will have them soon emma oh and yes i am just being super cautious that i didn't bring anything back home with me all healthy here all healthy here too so there you didn't it, whatever you brought back if you did it's not from us there we go we're just um attaching the leg um and put that on there now there um do we sell those lovely marks well actually you know we um they were a giveaway a couple of years ago and i found two in a box the other day and i thought we must use them we will definitely, Emma, this is something for you to get on the case. We will definitely have some more mugs because um, everybody needs a nice mug um, and, and um, especially with rainbows on. So um, that's definitely another job, Emma, that needs doing. So um, you probably wish now you weren't watching to find all these jobs. But yeah, they, yeah we, we, I would love to sell more mugs and I think that's something that we are planning to do. Calorie and sugar-free sweetie jars, yeah, definitely. And you must reuse them. We've, um, I can't stress it enough because we hate buying plastic in, but um, we did buy the jars in just so that you could share the sweetie jar experience and the pick and mix with us. Um, but yeah, if you could reuse them, that would be absolutely amazing. I, I don't want to even think that you're putting them in the in the bin. Um, you can store all kinds of things in there if you don't want to store wool in there. Sweets, for example just an idea there we go right so um there i've attached um the legs onto it and when i said earlier if it looks a little bit like a um, um a join here then just use wispy wispy ends of that brown wool lay them over the top like that just lay them over the top and then just stab them in and the join will just disappear totally there you go 
Um, if you want to make a carrot for your uh, bunny rabbit, we have actually got a free t um, online tutorial, this, um, a written tutorial on our website. And the, um, just repeat the website address again. It's www.themakers with two s's um, .co.uk. And um, we have absolutely lots and lots of free tutorials. All of these live streams will stay on YouTube so you can watch them later. Um, so please tell your friends about it. Let them subscribe to our channel and then um, they can either watch um, our tutorials and our videos at any time or they will know when the next um, live stream is coming up. And uh, I've just got to remind myself and I might have to pick Emma's brain um, the next one I think is on Monday. Am I right with that, Emma? And I can't actually remember what that is, but I'm sure Emma will tell me in a minute. Let's watch the stream. There you go. Oh, you've got a mug, Sarah. I remember that. Brilliant. So my bunny rabbit has definitely got four legs now, and now I'm going to quickly make a tail. The tail is actually um, so similar to a leg where you fold it in half, roll it up, but keep it slightly flatter. So don't make it such a tight sausage, just make it more like a flat pancake. And then stab it, turn it round, stab it a bit more, and then just add a tiny bit of white um, for a white flash. Just add that on one side, obviously only. There we go. And that white flash is actually underneath the tail, but the tail's sticking up. So you just have to remember which way to um, to attach the tail to the bunny rabbit. Um, just give it a bit of a, there. That's it. So you've got your tail there, brown on one side, white on the other. And um, again, broaden those wispy fibers out, then attach the tail so that the white is actually underneath it if it was folded down. But because it's sticking up, you can see the white and then just stab that into the um, bunny's bum. And now your little bunny has got a tail to show off as well. And you can always adjust the position of the tail by just stabbing into it. You can um, reduce the size if you need to. And um, there you go. So that's a tailed bunny rabbit. Woohoo! And then there were three. So um, the final detail, of course, is to um, add a little bit of pink for the nose. And I haven't really done anything um, um, on the nose that's like, um, you know, I haven't got a um, particularly sculpted nose. It's just a little, little bit of a pink fluff on there. Um, so just trying to get that in the middle of the face. It's good to look at it while you're doing that. It's more of a gesture than, than a, a precise detail. And, um, and then the only thing um, that needs doing is um, it giving it, if you want to, um, a bit of a white underneath and chin. And for that, you just use your wispy white wool, stroke it onto the bunny like that, just tease it out, lay it onto there. It needs to go upside down at the moment. And then just stab that in gently so that it looks a little bit like a dusting or like a wispy cover on the bunny and keep that nice and wispy. Everybody will uh, create their own style of um, bunny. You might want to make it a really um, um, like clear um, feature by um, putting a bigger patch of white on there. Um, or you can, it, it's entirely up to you. You might want to give the bunny white patches all around um, and make it more like a, um, a pet bunny rather than a, a white little bunny. And uh, once you've done that, if you want to tweak bits and pieces a little bit here or there, um, it should be all done, basically. And that Russian caracol is, is really, um, really felt down um, lovely. I know, Sarah, you like our hair brown. So uh, the hair brown is a great one as well um, to make this one. Um, we've actually used it originally for the hair in our book, um, he hence the name hair brown. And um, you can work a little bit more on the shaping and on everything else as well. They're just having a little, a little conversation there, a little um, discussion of what Easter is going to be like this this year. And um, so just yeah, just. Just make your little bunny, share it with us once you've made it on um, Everyone a Maker, on our Facebook page called Everyone a Maker. 
and it would be lovely to see it. So how is everybody doing? Um, oh yes, the carrot tutorial. It's so super easy to make that one and you could make lots of juicy carrots. Um, that's it, yeah, carrot, um, um, what's that? Oh yes, that's right. Oh nice, you all love them, excellent. And you like the hair brown, Sarah, brilliant. It's a really good wool. Um, what have I forgotten now? Oh yes, I want to mention one thing that um, I'm delighted that the new um, Making Soft Doll book is out. They will be posted now. I just haven't had a chance to sign them. Um, so I will I will do this as soon as I can um, today and then we will post, we're posting all the pre-orders that have already taken place tomorrow. But it's not too late um, to sign up for our um, tutorial, so a long tutorial. It'll be a, a similar... Um, set up as this one but you could be making one um, or the other of these so this is Hannes um, no this is Hannes he's um, he's got um, he's he's got the whole body shape with arms and legs and um, he's got a, a darker skin brown hair and the face is actually needle felted so uh, we will be doing that we will um, I will show you how to needle felt the face and then um, this one here is Hannah she is um, She's like a pouch doll, so it's really nice for um, for a little child to cuddle up to. It's done. It um, it's super soft velour. It's stuffed with um, with wool with our stuffing wool, and uh, she's got blonde hair and there's no face on her, but you can give her a face. So the options are there for the sew along. Um, if you hop onto our website, um, hop onto our website, um, then you can. Um, buy um, a ready pack that has everything in there including the pattern even though the pattern is actually in the book and we, we do recommend you have the book with it but it's not entirely um, necessary there will be three one hour sessions in May the dates are already announced and they are on the website with the uh, the product listing and you can um, um, you can um, add the book into your shopping basket as well and then you have a little bit of homework to do every time, but it's not masses. It's probably just finishing some sewing off so we, we don't all have to sit here and it's a bit like watching paint dry when, when we do sewing. So it's to keep it all moving and to keep it interesting. And I will uh, be there by your side. You can um, message me. We can do this together. Oh, thank you. Love the dolls, Alex. That's really nice. Oh, you've got a half-sided rabbit. And when fin finished, we'll go in the box for a certain tea party or oh, I know what tea party that is um, so yes thank you so much for um, for watching I am um, I don't I've actually run out of words to say but um, as I said if you don't know yet um, go on to Facebook definitely join our everyone and maker group if you haven't done it yet answer the questions please because that's one of the conditions for us letting you join and then while you're on there um, also go on to um, Sarah Brown's Facebook um, page uh, um, group rather Needle Felting UK and there's a competition going at the moment where you can win yourself one of our eight color wool packs a medium size earth mat um, if anybody wants to know any more about this just get in touch and we'll tell you well I'm happy to talk about it all day because I absolutely love these and you also get a set of felting needles with uh, two fine, two medium and two coarse needles. So you're absolutely in business. You can already just use um, the, the, the wool. You can use the felting needles and make um, something really nice and colourful. And um, other than that, I've got nothing more to add, I don't think. So thank you for um, watching. Thank you for bearing with me um, until I got my um, silent um, moment sorted. And uh, yes, we'll have a great weekend and I will be back next week on Monday. Um, did I ever find out what we're doing? Um, Monday's tutorial, ladybird, bees and a simple butterfly. I look forward to this because that's something that you can wear, that you can make lots of. You can put on your Easter uh, uh, down as an Easter decoration and the simple butterflies are great to make. Like a really quick, simple, um, lovely present. I haven't got one here right now, but I've got them in the book. Let's just have a look. You might have seen the, um, them in the book. Oh, they're on the back of the book even. There you go. That's the very simple butterflies. They're so easy to make. There's no needle felting involved. So if you've got um, children and you want to make them with them, they're such a lovely thing to make. And they hang up and they look especially nice in, in numbers. So um, join us on Monday. 
And then, of course, there's the ladybird and the bee as well. And uh, they can be turned into brooches, so they're something nice to show off as well. So thank you so much for um, watching. Have a lovely weekend. Stay safe. Stay positive. It's only temporary. We're going to get through this. It won't be long. And we come out at the other end. And in the, in the meantime, if you need to cheer yourself up, the awakening of the earth, um, pick and mix, sweetie jar. Just think of all these things that are happening right now out in nature. All the, all, everything is becoming green, colorful, blue skies, lots of clouds, amazing shaped clouds. And um, all of that, the, the, everything is still uh, the same. The, the sun goes up, um, up in the morning, the sun goes down in the evening. And uh, every day is full of surprises and you just have to stay positive. We will get through this, everybody. So thank you again and uh, we see you next week. Bye.